The NCT members have started officially enlisting in the military as on April 14th, Taehyung posted on Instagram showing off his new military-style haircut seemingly to prepare the fans for what was about to come. He shared pics of himself sporting a buzz cut and a short clip of his fellow members checking it out, which was very cute. His fellow members have been very supportive in general as they also gathered to send him off. They all rented a villa in Jinhae and had dinner together to bid farewell to Taehyung. Not only that, but despite being busy with filming his new drama in Suwon, Jaehyun made a late-night journey to join them, ensuring he could be present for Taehyung the following morning. Taehyung posted pictures with all the members, where they're either touching his shaved head or kissing him on the cheeks. He also promised to return healthy and safe and let his fans know that he loves them. However, fans couldn't help but notice that members like Mark and Haechan were missing from the gathering. To their credit, they did their best to be there, it just seemed like fate wasn't on their side. They were in Shanghai and switched their flight to catch the earliest one to see Taehyung, but their plans got messed up because of rain, causing their flight to be delayed delayed and rerouted to Jeju before finally heading back to Seoul. Because they couldn't make it in time as they were stuck in the airport, they held a live broadcast on Instagram to say goodbye to their fellow member, but it was obvious that they were devastated. Chan was even spotted crying on Mark's shoulder due to frustration, and Mark said, I feel thankful to the 127 Hyungs who all gathered to send Taeyong Hyung off. We promise to meet all together next time, so don't worry everyone, it's really heartwarming just how much the members love and care for each other, and we wish Taeyong a safe service. As you all may know, 50 50 are set to return in June with a brand new lineup, which is going to be built around Kina, the only remaining member from the original lineup. The auditions were held all over the world, focusing on Southeast Asia, and they had hundreds of people auditioning from each country. While Attract has yet to announce the new members, the Korean media seems to have found out some information about them already. We don't have any names yet, but it has been reported that the new members will be all Korean, with a few who might have studied abroad. It's also said that, unlike the original four-member lineup, the new 50-50 will have five to seven members, including Kina, with ages between 16 to 19. Neither Kina nor any of the new members will be the leader of the group, which seems to be a trend among the new K-pop groups. Most importantly, it has been reported that the company apparently aims to boost trainees' ethics and principles by providing them with additional education. The members will also be encouraged to read lots of books to broaden their knowledge in various fields. Reactions to the news were definitely mixed, but that was expected. Korean netizens are happy to see the group come back with new members especially since it has now been reported that they will all be Korean. They commented things like, I totally love the full Korean group, and it's nice to have a leader though, I trust their decision fighting. However, international fans appeared a bit skeptical, especially considering the ages of the members. They thought that it would be a better idea if the group had members that were closer to Kina in age, rather than have them be a lot younger than her. Others wondered whether the group could pull off another hit like Cupid since it's been a year since the song dropped and went viral, so people are wondering if it's been too much time Time for them to strike gold again. A user said, People will tune in for a first listen because it's interesting what the group and company has been through. Unless the song is totally one of a kind big hit, it will be a failed attempt. Well, we need to wait and see what they'll deliver since nothing has been officially confirmed about the lineup and their direction. In other news, Le Seraphim recently performed at Coachella, and well, people had a lot of opinions regarding their performance. To put it quite frankly, the group has been torn apart online due to the performance being deemed as very bad. The group took the stage at the festival on April 13th within just a year and a half of their debut, becoming the fastest Korean act to do so. Their set lasted approximately 40 minutes, during which they performed 10 songs, among them being a brand new, unreleased song titled 1-800 Hot and Fun, alongside their popular hits. What made the whole thing even better was the surprise appearance of legendary American musician Niall Rogers during their rendition of the hit song Unforgiven, as he joined the group during the performance. However, even though the members were definitely having fun on stage, their live vocals received a lot of criticism. Criticism. A discussion post on the coup about Le Seraphim's performance has garnered significant attention, amassing over 54,000 views and sparking more than 380 comments. Many Korean fans have taken a critical stance, expressing disappointment in the vocal abilities of the members. While Chaewon and Yunjin received some praise, Sakura faced particularly harsh criticism, including accusations of being tone deaf. A netizen said, Honestly, it might have been better if they had lip synced and focused on dancing and performing. Going live was too risky. Another one said, Sakura has been criticized for her vocal skills more than once. Does she not have the will to improve? Others wondered why Hybe would even send them to perform there, especially knowing that the members were lacking in the vocal department and couldn't perform live very well. They argued that this could have been avoided if the company sent them to perform live on other big stages before sending them to Coachella. The posts criticizing them, as well as clips from the performance, went viral on social media with thousands of likes and replies. However, fans of the group can't quite agree and are 
are doing everything to point out the good sides of their Coachella performance. They argued that while the performance wasn't up to par at certain moments, they performed for 40 minutes and sang live despite the intense choreography. The attendees at the festival also said that the group attracted a very large crowd, and judging by the videos they all posted, everyone was dancing along and having fun. A Reddit user who claimed to have been at Coachella commented, People showed up big time for La Seraphim and they were loud singing along, especially during Perfect Night. What is important is the crowd's reaction and the crowd loved them. Even people who didn't know who the group was seemed to have been having fun during the performance. Fans of the group also called out the comparisons between La Seraphim and Espa and Blackpink, who performed at Coachella before them. Even though both groups used to receive a lot of hate for their respective performances, they're now both being used to hate on La Seraphim. To the fans, it just shows that K-pop fans don't really care about vocals or performances, they just need their villain of the week so they can hate on them non-stop before another group comes along. This is also obvious by the way all K-pop fans hated on IVE for their vocals during one of their encore stages, only to turn around and accuse La Seraphim of not being as good as them. Unfortunately, all the hate reached the members, so Sakura wrote a post on Weverse to address the criticism. She understood that people have different expectations, especially depending on the type of stage. Her goal overall was to create a stage so enjoyable that even people who didn't know the group would have a great time and cherish the day. She believes her efforts paid off, resulting in, according to her, a good performance. Sakura shared that standing on the Coachella stage was a proud moment for the group, despite being a relatively new one with only one tour under their belt. Although some may view it as inexperienced, she believes they showcase their best. Sakura also commented on the comparisons between their group and others, and emphasized that comparing oneself to others is different from comparing to one's past self. It seems like all that mattered to her was that people enjoyed themselves, as she also said, no matter what anyone thinks, I believe in what I felt, that's why I've come this far, I won't betray myself, and I will continue to believe in myself. But as expected, even this statement received a lot of hate, as Korean netizens thought that she was being too arrogant and didn't really recognize the actual criticism against her vocals. Netizens were of the opinion that she should have apologized instead of writing this statement and coming off as if she didn't care about the criticism that she was receiving. Lastly, let's talk about Rise's Sung Han. As all of you may be aware, Sung Han has been on hiatus since November, with no sign of him returning. It hasn't helped that SM Entertainment hasn't uttered a word about his status as a member of the group, leaving fans in constant confusion. Sung Han's comeback seems even more unlikely now as reports suggest he's enrolled in a cram school, typically for university entrance exams, and has retired from being a celebrity completely. This has only made fans angrier because if it's true, why isn't the company saying anything about it? Even though it's understandable that they kept silent for the first few months, it seems like Sung Han is being removed from the group's history little by little. A commenter said, if SM really kicked him out, they gave exactly what that leaker wanted in the end. Seriously, this whole situation is just so awful and frustrating. Never seen a more incompetent company in my life. It's honestly disgusting that the company is treating him as if he never existed, to the point that if someone were to start standing the group right now, they wouldn't know that there was a seventh member. Fans deserve at least an explanation and a message from Sung Han addressing what's going on, otherwise there will be rumors and speculation to no end.